Howdy, y'all. Today, we're going to install a catback exhaust system on this here 1995 B4000 Mazda truck. Now, I'm going to install a Gibson exhaust system. If you see by the chart that they sent you, this is your stock exhaust, a Gibson exhaust, and other exhaust. I guess that's a decibel level, how loud they are. So the sound of the vehicle is one reason people install a catback exhaust system. It's also supposed to increase horsepower and gas mileage. I don't know if it does or not, but I'm not going to take it to a dyno to find out. So what is a catback exhaust system? It's basically uh, an ex the piece of the exhaust pipe that goes from your catalytic converter on back to the very end of the exhaust pipe, uh, to the exhaust tip. Which, by the way, when I'm done, it'll look like this. Ooh, ain't that pretty? Now it's not going to sound like one of those little cars that go Bzzz. No, it's, it's going to sound more of a deep sound. I've installed a Borla catback exhaust system on a Tacoma before and it does give it a lower sound and uh, it's not too loud and that's what I wanted. That's the reason I did this. The other reason is the exhaust system from here back is rusted. I even have a piece that's hanging down down here. I'll show you. Here's part of my exhaust. See, it's actually rusted totally into back here. It's rusted in so many different places. Now right here is your catalytic converter. It goes to this point right here, and this is the point we're going to have a fun time with. And it continues on back to the back of the truck. We're going to be replacing that muffler there too with the, the Gibson muffler, which will look pretty cool. Nobody will ever see it. Woohoo! <laughs> um, okay, so look at this right here. This is the part that I'm concerned about because, like I said, this is a 95 Mazda. And that basically means this right here is pretty much welded together by this time. All the corrosion, the heat and the cooling, the rust and everything means that these nuts are pretty much welded together. You're not going to get that off with a wrench. So I'm going to have to cut these. It'd be nice if this is a newer vehicle. You could probably take them off with a wrench. But yeah, I'm going to have to cut these. And this is a pretty weird setup. Uh, now I haven't seen nothing like this. you got springs in here. And it goes through this section here and out down here. And I believe this right here is a shaft that is actually welded to this flange. And it goes up inside of this flange. And the screw goes down through that shaft. That shaft is still sticking out right there and springs around it. And comes out down here. Why they did this, I don't know. It's just a very robust system. That thing is not going to come off by any means. <laughs> I guess the spring is to hold the tension and keep it together, make sure it don't come loose. If you'll notice under here, there's a little flange on these uh, nuts too that will keep them from turning. It'll hit against this uh, piece of exhaust pipe here if they happen to be backing out. Of course, at this stage, 1995, they're not about to come loose. So we're going to have to go ahead and cut that. I don't really look forward to it. Um, Lord willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be able to cut through here and that, that bolt will pop right out. But Again, a lot of this is probably pretty much welded in place after all these years, so it may mean that it's rusted all the way up in here, and I may have to get a drill and drill it out even after I cut this off. I hope that's not the case. I can't find a drawing of that connection, either in the Haynes manual or anywhere on the internet. So I drew my own. Here's what I think's happening here. This would be back to your catalytic converter, and I think it's got these two shafts that are welded to this flange. They're going to go through these two holes, and there's a spring and a bolt for each one. And they go through and connect on these nuts. And there's a flange, little flange, off these nuts to keep the nuts from turning in case they happen to come loose. At this point, it's not going to. Also, this flange is kind of weird shaped. It's only welded on this side and this side, and there's basically a, just a hole all the way around to here to the other side of this and underneath. So it's really connected here and here to the flange. Very interesting. Anyway, I'm hoping to cut these nuts off and the bolts will just come right out of the shafts. Whether that will happen or not, we will see. I'm probably going to have to drill them out. That ain't going to be too fun. How do you like my fancy drawing? <laughs> so now I want to compare the exhaust notes. And I'll have this comparison again in a few minutes at the end of the video. But currently, as it is, this is how my truck sounds now with just stock exhaust on.
wasn't that special. All right, you definitely want safety glasses. Gloves are helpful. I'm using a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. It'd be nice if I had a, an air tool. <laughs> It'd probably work a lot faster. But here we go. Here is yet another interesting development. Now every now and then, I'll take these pliers here and work the end of these. Once I, I didn't saw it all the way through, I'd take these and work them back and forth and see if I could break it off, and I finally did. So there's what it looks like. Now it looks to me like this section here, this fat part that I thought was a shaft, it don't look like a shaft at all, does it? That looks like it's part of the bolt. This is one big chunk of bolt, and that spring, I believe it's welded on there too, because it won't come off. It may be just that it's rusted on there, I don't know. But it looks to me, just looking in here, that's not just a shaft. That's a part of a very specialized bolt. Very interesting. All right. Now we're off to the other one. <laughs> Here's what it looks like after that big bolt has been removed. It's got a big hole right down through there where it went. And we'll have this one off in just a few minutes. Now here's some other issues we're going to have to deal with. If you'll excuse the camera coming around. How was that? <laughs> All right, there's one of the hangers. Uh, in fact, it's the only hanger. <laughs> I'm the uh, third owner of this truck. And I don't know what happened back along here somewhere. There should be another hanger, but there's not. And you can see down here where it's rusted through and they've tied on that piece of wire there to hold it together. Right here, you can see a little indention where it looks like the exhaust pipe should have went and something should be holding it in place there. I don't know what happened, but I'll have to fabricate something or at least temporarily I'm going to go ahead and reuse this wire 